Well, we are only halfway through the year, but 2006 is on track to become the year with the most mergers on record. But will the recent plunge in the stock market bring the M&A party to a halt? Well, joining us now with his analysis and outlook for the M&A market is Howard Horowitz. He's director of research at Walter Island Capital. Howard helps manage the arbitrage fund that invests primarily in announced mergers, takeover, buyouts, and other deals. So, Howard, thanks for joining us. And I guess that is the question. With this market plunge, does this really bring the, the M&A party to a halt or at least a slowdown? Well, I think the answer is definitely not. Uh, I, think it, I think it has very specific impact on existing deals and on deals that are pending and might be brought out. So what you may see uh, is, for example, in the uh, New York Stock Exchange transaction with Euronext, uh, you see a potential competing bid from Deutsche Börse. The fact that uh, New York Stock Exchange's own stock has declined so dramatically puts Deutsche Börse in a much better position to compete uh, right now New York Stock Exchange's bid is not much better than, than Deutsche Börse, and to that degree, it puts Deutsche Börse in a better position than it was before. Um, the same is true in, uh, in KLA, the ADE transaction. We've seen that switch from an all stock to an all cash because of movement in the stock price. Uh, certainly some deals that have collar mechanisms have already built in uh, a structure to the deal to account for movements in the stock price. But there's, there's no question that it has an impact on deals. But the important thing I think to realize about the M&A market is uh, transactions occur in good markets and bad. And in fact, some of the best values occur where there's volatility and in down markets. So, uh, so there's, there's no question that the visibility for deal flow is strong. Can there be some delays as, as particularly stock buyers uh, wait to see where their stock settles out? Yes. But the continued uh, visibility of deal flow because of all the cash that's in private equity funds, that's on corporate balance sheets, some of which are at record levels today, uh, clearly indicates that deal flow will continue. Now, you mentioned some maybe nuances in the deals in terms of getting done. One that also comes to mind was the Lucid um, Alcatel deal, because that was a pretty uh, big deal. Anything that you think could happen in, that, in a deal like that that could change uh, the situation. Well, I, certainly there's always, there's always the possibility where there's volatility around the deal of repricing or walking away, and those can't be ignored. Uh, as, a, as a risk arbitrageur, this, this is what you look at every day. Uh, th those things do come up. Some deals, as I say, do build in mechanisms that anticipate this. Uh, others close as is and, and they ride it out. Uh, but some, some change the mix, as, as KLA did, from, from all stock to all cash. Uh, there are a number of things that can be done, but, but certainly the possibility of a renegotiation does come up when you have this kind of volatility. Let's talk about what groups or industries in particular could be ripe for consolidation now. Well, certainly we've seen a lot in the commodity space, in particular in the energy and the oil sector. Uh, the interesting thing is where oil prices go. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the smaller oil companies up in Canada, even commodity companies, broadly speaking, in Australia, have been the targets of multiple bids, and, and, and in particular the oil companies, uh, because these are these are companies that are in westernized markets that can be digested. Canada has uh, oil uh, similar to some of the countries in the Middle East. It's just much more expensive to extract from what's called the tar sands of Canada. But at seventy dollars a barrel, give or take, it becomes worth looking into, and that's why some of those have attracted bids. We've certainly seen competing bids in Canada for on in the Falcon Bridge, Inco uh, example, and and many another. We've seen Terrason. Uh, in the past, uh, certainly uh, more broadly speaking in steel, we've seen uh, Mittal uh, chasing Axelor, we've seen a number of, uh, of, of the other commodity firms attracting interest. So I think those are spheres that we've seen a lot. Uh, pharmaceuticals is another area, of course we had the news on shearing today, uh, and, and I think that will continue. I think that uh, uh, there are a number of, of sectors that are highly fragmented that, that will continue, albeit with some pause given the volatility. Now, clearly, uh, you will take advantage of that in looking at uh, the research that you do. Absolutely. Okay, we leave it there. Thanks a lot, Howard. And Thank again, you. Howard Horowitz, uh, in fact, joining us uh, from Water Island Capital.